Aloha. Welcome to The Creative Life, a collaborative production of Think Tech Hawaii and the American Creativity Association. I'm your host, Darlene Boyd, and our guest for today's show is Dan Tepfer, a pianist composer of wide-ranging ambition, individuality, and drive. Dan has performed around the world with some of the leading lights in jazz and classical music and released 10 albums of his own, perhaps more at this point. As Dan discusses the intersection between science and art, between coding and improvisation, between digital algorithms and the rhythms of the heart, you can expect to be wowed. Dan, welcome to The Creative Life. I've had a chance to read your bio as I was visiting your website, and I've learned that you grew up in France studying classical piano and obsessively improvising jazz at home. And you say that your deepest roots lie in jazz and improvisation. Seems to me that jazz improvisation is such a unique art form and unique to the performer doing it. What would you say? Yeah, you know, the beauty of uh, jazz improvisation is that what you're looking for is to speak in your own voice. So for example, in classical music, there's a long tradition of improvisation, but the emphasis is usually put on, for example, being able to play in the style of Mozart or being able to improvise in the style of Beethoven. Um, whereas in jazz, um, what we really work on, what we value the most is a musician that's able to improvise in their own voice. And that's, that's something that's very important to me because if you can get familiar enough with the language of music to really improvise in it, and you can speak as yourself, um, then that's what making art is all about. So, so in jazz, we're really being artists within improvisation. We talk about the creative process here on The Creative Life, and uh, I think many of us that study creativity and those that are practicing creativity in their lives and leave creative lives, uh, we agree that the heart of creativity comes down to the content, the process, and the product. They all three need to be addressed. And clearly, in the limited time that I've had to uh, listen and watch your YouTube videos, which, which are, are just fascinating, uh, clearly, you improvise in all three. Would would you share a little bit about your creative process? Yeah, you know, it's. I feel like it's different every time. But for me, the creative process starts with ideas. Uh, I like to say that ideas are digital and feelings are analog. And what I mean by that is that feelings um, are hard to pin down. And that's the beauty of feelings is that they um, they they morph in these very uh, subtle ways. But ideas have this power, which is that you can define them exactly. Like I um, am passionate about this specific thing, and I want to carry this very specific thing out. And I think what's, what's beautiful about an idea is that it can be this germ that just takes root in you. And then over a very long time, um, it can grow to, to something that, that is like nothing you'd imagined before. So for example, my project um, Goldberg Variations Variations started with me getting really passionate about Bach's Goldberg Variations, which is one of the iconic pieces of classical music. And I just started playing it and, and learning the pieces, learning the, the variations in it, learning, learning the music as it was written by Bach. And of course, this idea came to me, which is, wait a minute, what would happen if I used box ideas in this piece as the basis for improvisation. What if I improvise using the same ideas he's using in, in each variation? And that over the course of about 10 years became my project uh, Goldberg Variations Variations. And it's been hugely important to me, but I would never have known uh, when I started getting interested in this music and started improvising on it that it would lead to something that, that that's had this kind of resonance for me. Um, so it's really about that that germ of an idea, letting it grow, I think often over a very uh, long period of time. So thank you for sharing uh, your personal process. And I think uh, those of us who, who attempt to work with creative individuals or even are trying to solve a problem, realize that there's a tenacity and a stick to that mm -hmm. has to be there. And as I learn more about you, 
to me, you exemplify that. You just re referenced the 10 year process, but you went through a five year process. Is that correct with a special project? Uh, yeah, I think you might be talking about Natural Machines, yes, uh, which is my, my latest kind of super special project in the sense that it's something I'm really excited about and that uh, is pretty unique to me. This is a project where I've written computer algorithms uh, that improvise with me in real time. So what that means is I'll literally be doing free improvisation at the piano and the computer um, is able to, to have the information uh, regarding every note that I play because I'm using this special piano called the Disclavier by Yamaha and the computer responds in real time with music of its own. So, you know, for example, and as you can see, I've also written uh, other programs that generate a, a visual representation of the music as it's happening. So that's just one of the many algorithms I've written that form this album, Natural Machines, and I keep writing more. <clears throat> and uh, as you mentioned, Natural Machines is, is, a, is a project that I've been working on since I think about 2015, something like that. Uh, so it's been, maybe it was 2014, so it's been uh, five or six years or seven years. And at first it was just, um, what really started off was discovering this instrument, the Yamaha Disclavier, which is a player piano. As you can see, it's able to, it's able to play all by itself, right? You can see the keys moving all by themselves there. But you programmed it to do that, or it has a mind of its own. Yeah, so this, this instrument is purely a robot. It'll do what you tell it to do, and it'll also tell you what notes are being played. Uh, so when I discovered this instrument, it, it doesn't really do anything on its own except it's able to play back recordings of what you've played or other people have played. But when I discovered this instrument, I realized <clears throat> that I could program it in real time to respond to what I'm actually playing. Um, and so that was the germ of this idea, but it actually goes way, way further back because when I was a kid, my dad uh, brought back a computer from his lab because he, he's a biologist and I started programming when I was about nine years old you know very very simple things mm -hmm. and uh, even though I never formally studied programming uh, I kept coding my entire life and I, it's all something that I've really really loved to do and so when I discovered this instrument the Yamaha Disclavier then it was like ding I can use these programming chops that I've been honing my whole life and I can bring that together with the, my, the, my work becoming proficient at improvisation, which I've also been working on my whole life. And that's going to, uh, I think, do something special when it comes together. But I didn't even know it was going to be special. I just, I just loved the idea and I dove in. And uh, you know, six years later, I put out this album, uh, Natural Machines. So getting back to your best friend, how, how did you come upon this? Did you, did you just go to a catalog or, or were there other musicians that you, you were involved with that you had recognized had used this? So um, th this, this piano uh, is actually on loan to me from Yamaha. And the reason I got involved with Yamaha was um, that this earlier project I mentioned, Goldberg Variations Variations, um, I made it at a time when I, I had won a few piano competitions, but I wasn't you know, super well established as an artist. And I needed a ton of time in the studio to, to work this out. In fact, I ended up recording the, the whole album three different times in three different ways. Uh, so I was looking for a place where I'd be able to play in silence with a beautiful instrument uh, using my own gear. And um, I signed as a Yamaha artist and they let me use their space in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, so I've recorded all my albums since 2010 in that space. And so it was a few years later, I, I went, into, went into that space and sat down on one of these disc clavers and started playing around with it and realized, oh yeah, this is not just an instrument that can play back pre-recorded things. It's, it, it's an instrument that can do things in real time. So obviously far more sophisticated and advanced as to the old, or maybe there, there are new versions of a player piano. It's certainly not that. It, it has... Well, it, it is in a way. It's, it's, it's okay. like a, the modern version of a player piano. You know, this, this definitely goes way back 
to, uh, to like the late 19th century, early 20th century, when those player pianos were playing what was written on a scroll the, uh. or a piano, piano roll. Uh, the only difference being that instead of a piano roll, uh, the information relative to what the piano is supposed to play is in digital form. And since it's in, it's in digital form, I can tell it what to play uh, in real time. So I saw you lean over when we we first started the interview and you you pulled I'm sorry to be so so low key in my question here but you pulled at something what were you doing you leaned over and Yeah I, I I connected a cable that goes into this computer it's a it's a MIDI cable MIDI is a is a language that computers use to talk about music with each other mm -hmm. and uh, I connected the MIDI cable to my computer so that the piano could could my, the piano on my computer could talk because all the programs are programs I've written that are living in my computer. So, you know, for example, here's one that turns everything I play upside down. Uh, this is called, this is what we call inversion in, in, in music. only begin to imagine what it must be like to be in a concert with you in one of your concerts am i yeah this is this is a fun project because it's it's uh, different every time because it's all about free improvisation this is it's a project where i've instead of writing a piece instead of composing a piece i'm writing the way that a piece works and this is i think an interesting part of creativity is when you start to separate um the idea of a finished product in its details mm -hmm. from the idea of process. And what we can do is instead of creating finished products, we can create processes. And the beauty of creating a process is that every time you engage with that process, you can do it differently. Now, not every pianist can choose to do this and so do you, do you have a background? Did you, I, I know you, you must have studied something in computer and, and clearly in, in reading about you, you've, you have quite a unique background, but. Well, uh, I actually never I'm studied also, computer yeah. science at all. I, I never studied programming. It's something that was completely self-taught for me. Um, but as I said earlier, I, I got into it when I was about nine or 10 years old. So uh, I was born in 1982. So when I was getting into it, you know, I, we didn't even have the internet. So it was all, just like reading the user manual and, and, and going to the library and borrowing books. Um, but uh, I did study physics in my undergrad. Uh, my, my undergrad is in astrophysics. So, so I've always loved science. Uh, I've always loved uh, math and physics. And that's an important part of my life. Uh, but the computer science is all self-taught. 
Do you think your background in physics influences some of, do we see some of that in the, the graphics that emerge? Or am I, what, what would I call that, your visuals that we see? Yeah, you could call them visuals, you could call them a live score or uh, anything you like to. Oh, um, <laughs> I'll try to remember cause, because, you know, in, in, in many of these algorithms, I'm actually representing the music very exactly. Like, here's one called constant motion. So in this one, um, time goes by radially, right? Mm -hmm. And when a note is low, it's closer to the center of the radius. And when it's high, it's, it's further, further at, at the outside. So So in addition, so what I'm playing here is in white. Any notes yes. I play are white. And then the computer, this algorithm that I've written, either responds below what I've written or above. And if it's, if it's below, uh, or if it's, a, if it's above, like what just happened here, it's in green. And if it's below, like what happened there, it's in red. So these are decisions I've taken to represent the music in a certain way, because what I'm trying to do is show the structure of the music. Um, this is a different one called Canon at the Octave. Um, where everything I play is repeated uh, an octave below. And so what I play was in, in the foreground there in blue. Um, but the, what the computer plays is in, is in yellow. And what I'm trying to do there is, uh, is just really show the relationships between these two voices really clearly. But then in some of the other algorithms I've written, um, it's, I've decided to not show every note that I'm playing, but rather show um, a, a deeper principle about the music. So for example, uh, this is called triad sculpture. And this is all about um, creating three-dimensional representations of uh, the harmonies that I play in my left hand. So if I, if I play this, for example, that is a minor triad, and this is an exact representation of the ratios between the frequencies of this uh, harmonic structure. So in this case, in the time that the lowest note vibrates 10 times, the middle one vibrates 12 times, and the upper one vibrates 15 times. And that's what I'm showing in this figure. If I do a major triad, which is this, you see that's a completely different figure. And those are ratios four to five to six. So much simpler ratios, and you see that right away. And if I do uh, something like this, you see we get some really crazy shapes. And I just love these figures because they're both profoundly true from like a physical perspective, but they're also, to me, profoundly beautiful and elegant. Um, so really, it's a completely creative project. And since I'm pro writing all the programs, I can do whatever I want. So check this out, for example. Here's three octaves, which is just this stretched out figure eight. But what happens if I start to, uh, to detune them? Okay, this is in exact relationships of one to two to four. But if I start to put it out of tune, this happens. And you get this, this stretching of the figure. And I've also, I, I, I wonder what it, was, what it would be like to, to travel inside the figure. You see that, that little dot that's traveling around inside the figure? Here's what it looks like from inside. 
and I can keep playing during this time. So right now, I'm showing these to you at the level of just ideas, right? I'm showing you some of the processes involved. But of course, in performance and, and, and on the album, I'm um, making real pieces out of these. I'm improvising stories within these processes, you know, with the stories that have a beginning, uh, development, and an end. They're still completely improvised. None of this is planned in, in advance, but I'm engaging in that more spiritual process inside myself of telling a musical story to my audience, which is not exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of showing you uh, little bits and pieces of the processes involved. Well, since you mentioned telling the audience uh, a story, a spiritual story in the sense, uh, I found that uh, Fractal Trees I, on your album, mm -hmm. I found well, perhaps because in, in, in our work in creativity, there was an author many years ago that wrote a book called Grow or Die. And I mm -hmm. think we would all agree, it, creativity, if we, we don't feed it, will die off. So yes, that was in my mind as I kept looking at the tree growing. And then thank you for demonstrating how you get, how we as the viewer can get inside those graphics because I felt that with the tree. So I did feel a real connection, not trying to give my opinion, but I would encourage our viewers to, to give a look since everything is available. You're so generous with what you offer on YouTube. And well, you know, I, I, I just have this, this belief that we as artists are here to create art and that if we make art that has any kind of resonance in the world, um, the world will take care of us in some way or another. And I think that's a belief that, that's been validated for me uh, many times in my life. So, yeah, I love to kind of give as much stuff as I can. You know, for example, Natural Machines is an album I released both as a, a, a CD, and it's also on the streaming services and all that, and as a a video playlist on YouTube. So it's just completely freely accessible. You can see the 11 tracks by going to uh, dantepfer.com slash natural machines, um, or just go to my website, dantepfer.com, and, and uh, it's, you can find it there. You can also just go to YouTube and search for Dan Tepfer Natural Machines, and it'll come right up there as well. Do, do, should I show a little bit of this fractal tree you mentioned? I would love if you did. I really would, <laughs> just a personal <laughs> desire. This is a this is a fun one. It's it's one of the only algorithms I've written where I don't even play the piano. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me try this again. There we go.
What a treat, what a treat. Dan, you didn't invite me to sing with you. I... Oh my God, if only I had known. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. I was going to, oh, oh my, we're just down to a, to a few minutes left, but um, I did want to comment and ask you about the duos that you have been with in your performance. And uh, when Kristen watches this, I just have to say that your, your performance, the Australia combo, when she was in Australia and, and you were, improvising with her it was it was just so enjoyable she seems like a wonderful person yeah um so you know during the pandemic what's really become apparent to me is that we need to find other ways of connecting authentically through music uh when we can't actually be physically together in the same space and so i worked very hard on low latency audio uh, through the entire time of the pandemic, and I'm still working very hard on it. And these are ways through software of reducing the lag between the moment when I make a sound and the moment when it's heard um, in the earphones of the person I'm playing with. Uh, and so during the pandemic, I was using a, a, an open source project uh, from Stanford called JackTrip uh, that uh, I ended up contributing to. But the problem with JackTrip is it's incredibly hard to use. And so uh, I've now released an app called Farplay that makes uh, low latency audio accessible to absolutely everybody. And I really encourage everybody to check it out. Uh, just go to farplay.io, farplay.io, and you can download it for free and check it out. And it enables you to make music with other people through the internet uh, as long as they're not insanely far away from you um, to the point where it feels like they're in the same room with you. And we could use that for conversation also, obviously, as I watched. So I look forward it to it. It makes conversation feel so much more natural. It's really Ooh. crazy because, you know, we're so used to like interjecting when we talk, being like, oh, yeah, you know, or mm -hmm. yes, yes. And, and on Zoom, there's so much latency between the time when we say something and the response mm -hmm. comes that it feels kind of awkward. And so with Farplay, you don't get that. Dan, we are out of time uh, on behalf of, of our viewers and uh, some of the folks that I know that are watching. Uh, we're so glad you came into our life today and hope we do keep in touch with you and, and wish you well. And uh, we'll be following you, Dan. Absolutely. It's, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and congrats on a great show. Um, Thank you. Thank I you. look forward to watching more episodes with other people. All right. Thank you for joining me, your host for today's The Creative Life Show, and our guest, Dan Tepfer. Join us again in two weeks for our next show as we continue to bring you individuals demonstrating their passion for living the creative life. Aloha. <laughs>